Welcome to this new unit number three, which is signal processing. So this unit is all about the whole signal chain, starting at the microphone, going to the speaker. And in this video, I will explain you what the content of this unit will be, what the following videos will cover. And I will also go through the signal chain with you to discuss, discuss all the different parts in the signal chain so you get a nice and good overview about what uh, we work with here. So um, here you can see the content of this unit. So we will have six videos coming up. First one will be about gain structures. There is various points in the signal chain where there is gains. So we'll talk about how to set all these gains correctly. Number two will be about equalizers. Uh, equalizers are one of the most important tools to get our signals right. So uh, we will talk about equalizers. Then we will talk about compressors. Uh, how does compression work? What parameters does it provide and how can we use them? Then number four will be about gates. We'll talk what is a gate, uh, how can you use it and what parameters does a gate provide? Then there is another type of EQ, which is the graphic EQ. So we'll talk about applications of the graphic EQ and where uh, you use the best, where, where it's uh, used the best. Number six will be a signal processing guideline. So I will basically uh, go through various different instruments and explain to you how you could use equalizers, compressors and gates uh, to have a good to, to set the parameters properly for different instruments and for whole bands, of course. So uh, let's now walk together through this whole signal chain. So all of the six videos I just mentioned are somewhere part of the signal chain and whenever it pops up, I will also again mention it. So uh, again, we will start at the microphone. This is where the source of the signal is. Of course, it could also be the instrument and then we will go it basically goes the way the whole way through this signal chain until the sound or the signal reaches the speaker so uh, i will now explain to you again step by step what is happening from microphone to speaker so in the in unit number two we talked about microphones a lot we talked about different types of microphone we talked about um uh, polar patterns of microphones. We talked how can we use mics to uh, set up a drum or to how can we mic a electric guitar amp. We also talked about electrical systems, uh, sorry, wireless systems. So that's all covered now. Um, of course, another source of signal could be the instrument itself. Uh, then we often use DI boxes. Here we differentiate between active and passive DI boxes. So active DI boxes, they have to be fed with additional power. We can also use phantom power for this. So what the DI box is and why we use it was also part of unit two. Uh, also what cables we use to transfer the signals through this signal chain. Uh, we discussed in unit two, we discussed about symmetric and asymmetric cables. We talked about ground loops about different plugs and socket. We talked about what shielding is and why we need it. And of course, we talked about uh, why, uh, like why uh, a symmetric signal is so important when it comes to interference. So um, then the next part, basically after the instrument or the mic where the signals com comes to is the stage box. So the stage box, the goal of the stage box is to transform or to basically send the signal into the mixer. Uh, nowadays, we mostly use digital consoles. There is also still analog consoles. So in digital consoles, for digital consoles, the stage box also transforms the electrical signal into a digital signal. So uh, it basically, the signal basically gets transformed for, from an electrical, like, uh, um, different, like a, an electrical signal into let's say ones and zeros. So <laughs> uh, th that's basically the computer language. And uh, what a stage box in the end does is just transform this inf electrical information into, w into codes, into uh, long one codes um, made out of ones and zeros, basically. 
Um, of course, in analog consoles, this is not necessary. So the stage box literally just sends the signal, the electrical signal further into the mixer. Also very important uh, at stage boxes, we have always or almost always an indication of phantom power. So whenever you send phantom power out of an input, it will be indicated by a little red light. Also the gain, which is next in the signal chain, is basically part of the stage box because we have to set the gain before the signal is transformed from an electrical signal into a digital signal because the gain, the, the most important functionality of the gain is basically to get the signal into a range where we can work with it. So it should neither be too strong nor too weak. If it is too strong, it will peak and the signal will basically crush or overdrive and we cannot use it anymore. And if it is too low, we also cannot use the tools properly provided in the mixing console. Uh, so we have to set the level properly and this has to happen before the signal is transformed to a digital signal. So this gain in the end, of course, it's a knob in the mixing console, we turn, but actually what is changed is, is literally the, the strength of the electrical signal at the stage box. When we change the gain, we, the signal uh, travels further to the phase invert. So the phase invert is uh, a button you can click to rotate the signal 180 degrees. This can help if there is um, wave, like if, if, if waves overlie uh, and if we have signals which cancel each other out. So um, especially uh, if you mic a drum and you use more than one mic for the same uh, drum part, let's say snare, we have a snare bottom and top. So uh, that's where you can think about or most likely there you will need the phase, the phase invert because it could be that there is coherent signals cancelling each other out. So you uh, would go with the phase shifter to get uh, back proper signals. After the phase shift, we have the user delay. Most uh, modern console pro consoles provide the user delay. Um, this is basically ju we just delay the, the coming, the incoming signal by a few milliseconds. And I myself use it for two reasons. One reason is uh, I use it to delay multimedia input because often the video uh, which is sent to some screen is a little bit slower than the audio. So uh, especially when people talk in a video, you can see the difference clearly that the, the audio is first. And then I normally use the user delay to delay this, um, to delay it such that the video signal and the audio signal are in, in line, in time, like synchronized again with each other. The second, uh, the second reason why I use a, a user delay is if I do have multiple, let's say, acoustic guitars, or if there is two acoustic guitars in a band, I sometimes delay one acoustic guitar by a few milliseconds. Don't ever go above 20 milliseconds here because that will be the point where uh, it can be heard. However, as uh, the two acoustic guitars send very similar signals, uh, they could, like the, the sound waves could overlie too much the same way and in, and we, you could not differentiate between the two electric guitars add uh, two acoustic guitars anymore. So it's actually a quite cool trick to just do a little delay so the sound waves are shifted a little bit so that both guitars can be heard again. Um, next we will um, send the signal to the high pass and low pass filter. So the high pass and low pass literally cut either at the lower or the upper end of the frequency spectrum. So the high pass cuts from 0 dB up to a certain, uh, from 0 frequency of 0 or 20 up to a certain frequency. And the, high, the low pass cuts from a certain th frequency up to 20 k Hertz. Uh, and then we go into all these things we discuss in this unit. We will go, the signal travels through the compressor and the gate, it travels through the equalizer, the parametric EQ, it travels through inserts, this is just additional uh, processing um, you can do with the signal, which we don't uh, really discuss in this training, but it would just be like additional transformation and signal processing you could do here, pretty uh, like a custom way to even change the signal more or optimize the sound better. Uh, after one, after this, it goes through the mute button. Um, 
the mute button uh, of course I think you know all, you know it all we always use it as, as a switch basically to switch off the signal so it doesn't go further through the signal chain next we have the fader uh, this is where we decide how loud the final signal will be and this is then sent to the left right processing so the left right processing basically collects all the different signals so uh, we have lots of instruments lots of microphones and each of these instrument and microphones has the signal chain we just discussed at the left right processing they're basically all brought together they're merged they're summed up and uh, they can further be they can be further processed with another eq with another compressor with another gate whatever you want to use here and then it will go through another mute button another fader this is like the master mute and the master fader uh, and after that it will be sent out to the speakers so that's the main like that's the there was again a little summary about the main signal chain signal processing chain uh, we have this like whole lower part here um, and this part basically uh, is all about um, picking signals out at the separate at the at the specific point in the signal chain so it's it it uh, is for most of the more modern mixers it is possible to decide uh, to pick the signal at a certain point in the signal chain and and basically guide it into another section of the mixing console so uh, that allows even more possibilities to work with these consoles uh, I just want to quickly mention one or two possibilities so what we often do is using AUX buses we call, we call these additional signal processing chains now buses so we can lead or we can uh, basically pick the signal of different channels at a certain point in the signal chain and and instead of sending it to the left right processing we send it to an aux bus and the aux bus can then do different things with that signal again he, you can do a basically a separate mix and send it to a monitor like to a floor wedge or you can send it to uh, any near system um, most mostly i do use it uh, for in-ear systems to do monitoring for the band however there is different uh, signal processing buses there is groups also often I use groups let's say I, I, I uh, before I send the signal to left right processing I often send the signal to a so-called group bus so I collect let's say all the drum parts all the drum channels I send it to the group I do some more compressing uh, probably some more EQing and then I send it to the left right processing so that's another application of a of a single processing bus a further one would be matrices there is also the matrix bus um, the matrix bus is really similar to aux buses but it is mostly used to send like the whole mix to a different room let's say so if you have speakers in a separate room um, outside of the venue let's say then uh, matrices is mostly the way to go uh, matrices allow you to pick uh, the signal after the left right processing so before or after the master fader and then to send it send the whole mix to a different location like a different room or so so also these buses they provide basically the same functionality again they have phase shifts they have compressors they have EQs and they additionally also have um, graphic EQs that's actually also the main the left right processing section has so graphic EQs um, are very important and they will also be discussed in this unit number three we use it mainly to eliminate feedback that's how I I mainly use them uh, so we will discuss this later in unit number three too there's also inserts again of course there is mute buttons and faders and then um, yeah we mostly have another left right processing where we can send it to um, and then we finally um, send it to some other speakers or in your systems or uh, yeah whatever we, we, wherever we want to send it to so that's uh, the summary of of the whole um, like of this of the whole signal chain so I hope it helped you again to get an overview about where the signal goes through what parts we already covered now in unit number two and what parts we are going to cover in this unit number three looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos